Hi everybody, here's Christian from Teamwork Cast. And it is I, the boat boss, Putty, also mm-hmm. of Teamwork Cast. We are going on the boat. This is CCG Archaeology. And this is yet another packet of uh, the Seventh Sea, Nick. The Seventh Sea. You're the boat boss. <laughs> You're the boat boss. And Nick has been playing Metal Gear Solid. No, what was that <laughs> from? Uh, Leviathan Warships, that's what it was from. Oh, oh I remember. <laughs> I just had like, this great trailer, right? <laughs> so I never actually uh, played the game, but the trailer is pretty good. Yeah, like everybody is enjoying the trailer of this. So this is the 7th uh, Sea. Wait a minute. So this is uh, which one? The Armada, right? This is the Armada. These are the Spanish folks. There's a bit glare going on. I'm just going to unwrap this immediately. So oh this is the second gosh. pack that we just opened. Uh, and uh, I really... P- <laughs> It's been some time since we opened the last pack, but ever since I actually looked through the manual a little bit. And this game is amazing! Yeah, this game's super fun! And, uh... Yeah. It's, uh, it, like, as the, the game sort of expands and gets bigger, the story keeps moving. Hmm. So, uh, the game usually felt uh, pretty fresh. It's also difficult to get hold of it. I'm kind of amazed that you were able to buy it because immediately after our first review, I went online and tried to get some uh, boosters or, or other. Like There's also one starter that we were missing. Uh, so I tried to get the missing starter and it's just impossible to get it on eBay at least. Uh, I guess it must be eBay Europe, right? Because I can get it e- pretty easily. I know. Even on America, I, I couldn't, couldn't find it. Really? Yeah. Huh. Huh. Anyway, so this is the Armada Castile. Uh, the weak arm themselves with revenge. The righteous arm themselves with justice. Oh, so we are talking about justice, social justice. justice. Warrior. And that is a quote by Orduno, High Admiral of the Armada. Several years ago, the mighty Castilian Armada was destroyed. Slowly it has been rebuilt under the watchful eye of Enrique Orduino. Or- Orduno. Duño. Orduño. Castile's finest admiral. Now he sails the seas looking to bring justice to those who merit his beloved nation's honor. Merit. Merit? Marred. Marred. English language is difficult language. <laughs> uh, yes, so this is um, another. I, also, another thing I just got recently is um, the Doomtown uh, Reloaded. Mm. I just wanted to figure out how this works because I never understood how it works. And so I noticed immediately some amazing similarities between D- this and Doomtown. PEG and AEG were very close. I, I think the original Doomtown was released by the same company. Uh, PE- well, Alderac created the Doomtown game off of the PEG run Deadlands RPG. Uh-huh. Uh, so anyway, like one aspect of Doomtown is that you tap your dudes or boot your dudes. And that's kind of like a very yeah. important thing. And uh, and this is also very much about booting and also like um, like you you absorb damage that is being dealt to you by booting your dudes and this is the same thing that that happens here. Yeah. So the original publishers of the Doomtown game were the Five Rings Publishing Group. Yeah. And uh, this is these guys would eventually become Alderac Entertainment Group. So this is basically from the same guy. So yeah. so you said you really like this deck, these Spaniards, basically. These are Spaniards, Well, it's kind of right? neat. Like, <clears throat> the Spanish base, the Spanish fleet had been destroyed, and this guy was just kind of going around. He's basically the, uh, I guess if we were to talk about, um, what's that Disney runs Pirates game? Disney runs Our Pirates. Pirates uh, IP. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, he would be the this Captain Arduino is basically the uh, the captain that was chasing Jack Sparrow around. Ah, but he oh, has see. a bit you mean, more. You mean in the, in the first movie? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. And uh, like this guy, the Spanish Armada there had been destroyed, and the French Armada was just destroying everything. And so mm-hmm. Arduino had to like figure out how to deal with the pirates while also trying to figure out how to destroy the French Armada. So just like thematically I really enjoyed. So I'm flicking through the cards to find the cards that are that interest us, us the most. We're going to later go on through each individual card individually, I guess. Um, but yeah, I just want also to add, like there's some aspects um, that are also very similar to 
um, to Doomtown were, for example, something I really enjoy is that you start with uh, a certain amount of money and you can buy dudes for this yeah. amount of money. You so you have like a starting posse, so to speak, so you mm-hmm. don't have to build up everything. Yeah, and it's, that's, that's super nice. It's a very nice mechanic. Something that, uh, again, I think the comparisons to Star Trek the trading card, uh, Star Trek, yes, uh, CCG, uh, are kind of like, um, uh, you know, it's kind of like a similar thing, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, I think this uh, solves like a lot of problems that Star Trek CCG had, like where you have to build like entire fleet before you can do something. And here it's like you start with a ship, and this time it's the Corazon de Castile. Mm. What's a Corazon? Uh, I would imagine it's a type of boat. I think it's a it's uh, it's some kind of word. Some oh, it's the heart of Castile. No, oh, of course, of course. <laughs> uh, so crew maximum eleven. Uh, oh man, now I forgot like what the crew maximum on the, on the previous ship was. Uh, oh tack, gosh. Tack before performing an action to move to adjacency. So this this um, above function to tack to perform an action to move to an NGCNC is something that uh, a lot of ships have. have. And I think this is um, one of the things that is kind of used to uh, basically um, co- to catch up with the ships when you're following them. Yeah. And also to run away. Yeah. Um, tack when you are paying for the sailing cost to begin bo- a boarding to produce five sailing. Wow. Huh. What? So this ship can be... I guess this ship's supposed to be mega fast? I don't get it. Basically... Uh, Why do you begin a boarding? What are you boarding? Because when you board, you're looking at your sailing because you have to basically catch up to the ship and toss all of your junk onto them. And so this ship provides extra sailing because you have to beat their sailing cost. Ah, okay. So you can basically catch up with other ships more quickly. Yeah. If you attack this, then you can do a boarding with five uh, sailings starting out. Well, so what this says is to begin boarding, you pay sailing equal to your ship's move cost. Mm -hmm. So the move cost here is four. Yeah. Uh, The other player may pay sailing equal to their ship's move cost to cancel the boarding. Mm-hmm. If the other player cannot or will not cancel the boarding, then your ships have connected and your crews will begin fighting. Yeah. So. Hmm. I don't know. It's uh, we're gonna gonna have to figure this out when we play this. Yeah. And this is the captain that you talked about, which you said uh, would look like like. Uh, he reminds me of the captain from Robotech, mostly because mm. of the hat. I mean, he has quite a quite a lot of wardrobe on him. <laughs> the hat looks like a boat. Man, this guy is pretty the boss. He looks like it, like he's inside a robot. I really like his flavor text. Uh, the Castilians say that the man with many enemies and no allies is the most dangerous man. <laughs> is is he really though? Uh, I mean, because he's basically backed into a corner for forever, and ah, nobody so, knows so he, what he's gonna do. Nobody so can he, betray him. In it. Yeah. So he can lash out at everybody, and he has no weaknesses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Swordsman plus three. Uh, while you have three or more other Castilian crew on your ship, all your boarding attacks inflict one extra hit. So this is basically also another thing that is, I think, common, where uh, if you have uh, on in your crew, among your crew are certain amount of people that are in your faction, which is like to, uh, indicated by the symbol up here, then the captains always give you a, some additional bonus. Mm-hmm. And this is, um, again, it seems to be like this, this faction is very good at boarding. Yeah. Because, I mean, they're supposed to be fast and furious. So they're basically the Vin Diesel of this, of this <laughs> Spanish Vin Diesel of this uh, uh, Yo Soy Enrique or, or, or Duno. Um, uh, I think it's yeah. sort of interesting in the, the, the narrative of this game, eventually Orduño gets uh, either captured or kidnapped, I think, by the pirates. Spoilers! And they have to go, and uh, they, the Castilians actually ally with their enemies, the uh, Montaigne, the French, mm. and uh, go to get him back. Um, so uh, the stats here is he has two ca- cannons, four sailing, which is pretty hefty, and five um, swordsmanship, which is also pretty pretty nice. 
so yeah, I think this is the, this this is a kind of like a deck where you you where you try to board stuff. I feel maybe it's a bit too simplistic. Maybe you well, have to figure because the other deck we looked at was mostly it seemed if I remember right, it was mostly about gunning. Yeah, the, it seems to be more gunning oriented, but it ha- also had some battles. So I don't know. Um, yeah, what well, I think one thing that I think we got wrong last time around, or not wrong, but maybe uh, we haven't clarified correctly, is like you can basically tap or tack, they call it tack, any of those guys, so you know, turn it sideways around, and they will produce um, one of the f- basically five resources here. And the number on the resources says how much of that resource they produce. So, for example, oh man, I'm getting a call. This is. Uh-oh. So the number of resources they generate is indicated by the by the different uh, numbers here. So if I tag him for cannons, he will actually produce zero cannons. So it does make sense to tag him for cannons. Yeah. Uh, but I can tag him for that's I think adventuring. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I can tag him for to 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 fight. So yeah, Black Booth Bill is like a neutral kind of guy who is just really an adventurer <laughs> and swashbuckling kind of guy. He is not very expensive though, and he can punch people. Bad Maps is an action that costs one adventuring. Um, play when a player tags a crew to produce adventuring. That crew produces no adventuring. That crew's controller may p- pay two sailing to prevent this effect. I love this. <laughs> the kind of story that he tells, like they got a bad map, so they want to go on an adventure, but they got the r- r- bad map, so they are at the wrong place. But they can, you know, travel a little bit further to uh, to catch up with with where they're supposed to be. After the third hole with no sign of treasure, uh, Rice buried him alive with his own shovel. <laughs> All right, Nick, winds of fate. This is adventure. It's one C away to complete tag three adventuring two if completed in La Boca. La Boca. That's the La... C mm. by Castile. Yeah, that's where they start. Uh, crew attachment uh, three plus three sailing. So this gives you, wow, this gives you basic winds of fate. I really like that adventures. Uh, I already saw it last time around, but I really like how the adventures produce. There are basically bonuses. Mm. Uh, directed play. I think we had had that before. Play where attacking a crew with a cannon skill greater than six. That crew produces three extra cannons. So you can make like a really, really uh, hefty shot that will produce a lot of damage. One amazing uh, shot. Powder monkeys. I don't care if the water is over your head. Get down there and man the cannons, or I will stick the p- this pistol so hard for who knows you'll be sneezing gun powder for a week. Um, I don't so, know if that quote makes sense. You think so? I don't know if it does. How, how so? Well, I mean, if he's going to go underwater and man cannons, I don't think he can actually shoot them, so he'll just die anyway. That's how they invent torpedoes, Nick. Broken compass in. As this C attachment. Any player in this C may sink the in by attacking three adventuring as an action, react, tack when you are in the sea and paying an influence cost to produce one influence. Hmm. Huh. So you can generate influence and cost two, um, two adventuring to play out. Hmm. That's interesting. I, I'm sad that somebody, you have to sink the, the inn. Like, what if other people well, want you to can sink it? the inn, but you don't have to. You can just keep it around. Yeah. Um, the ship went down and er, your man did drown and die. Well, if you all died, then it must be true. <laughs> 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 Love it. Uh, hiding in the reefs. Um, react. Play when an opponent begins boarding your ship. That ship suffers three hits. The boarding is cancelled. <laughs> oh, this is really good. Man, that's awesome. That's really, really good. <laughs> and it costs zero. No, wait a minute. It's plus sailing plus zero. I, I, I think it is this this thing in up up here, which means you have to pay four of, of your the you would have to pay four with this ship plus zero. So you have to have to play pay four sailing. I think. Mm. A hero's courage is an action. A react play when a heroic crew with a swashbuckling greater than four tags to absorb hits. For, from a boarding attack. Reduce the hits inflicted to zero. So this is basically, you can play this on your captain, 
when your captain is getting uh, getting hit, he can you can uh, you can prevent everything. Timothy Lebeau. Uh, that's an expensive dude. He costs seven. Look at this, Nick. Look at this. <laughs> like if you have it in your starting party, then he's ba you basically can have only one other guy. <laughs> you just you don't need anything else. Yeah, it's, it's the only, and he actually doesn't have anything else instead of influence. He only has influence and swashbuckling. He's a unique, loyal Porte one. Uh, at, attack Timothy and target a ship. Timothy inflicts one hit on that ship. Wow. That's pretty useful. Uh, it doesn't even say that the ship has to be in the same, same sea. You can just do it any time. Huh. Okay, that's why it's so expensive. He calls down what? An orbital strike? Are you sure you were able to drop that penny into a captain's pocket, Pepin? The boy nodded. The Timothy grinned and rubbed his bloody hands together. <laughs> <laughs> this is weird. Uh, Sail of wind is another adventure it's unique three seas away to complete tech 50 adventuring eight if completed in mirror uh wow this is very expensive adventure man you got a lot of really expensive stuff because i'm looking through my version of that deck while you're going through this and i haven't seen any of the cards you're looking at yet yeah so these so they are uh, mostly randomized uh, artifact captain attachment react attack sails of wind after your ship has moved to an adjacent sea to move again at no cost all right never mind yeah this is really good you, <laughs> yeah. you can just keep moving like look here this is just three adventuring away and it gives you plus three sailing this is 15 adventuring so good this God. is uh, i think something that you play late game it's kind of weird in this kind of deck where i, I guess it's like a random card but it would be like an, i don't think really good in this deck where we're not so much about adventuring are we <laughs> well, um, I guess yeah. not. But I mean, yeah, I mean, this is a very sailing heavy deck. So you're eventually gonna want to catch your other the other crew and just like destroy everything. Uh, is it sailing heavy? Well, because the captain, his highest stat is uh, sailing. No, it's swashbuckling. Swashbuckling and sailing. Yeah, yeah. Sail. Looking to me, where I find some sailors. Oh. <laughs> your jeans are nicely faded. <laughs> Uh, we have to keep going about that day. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, William Fodd. When William attacks to absorb hits from ca uh, cannon attack, he absorbs two extra hits. So, dang. Th this guy absorbs cannon hits. Man, look at this guy. I never seen anything like it. The cannon shot flies by his head and he just don't seem to notice. All right, so he's yeah. just an, like a clueless guy. He's I'm sad it wasn't just a big portly dude who catches it with this Yeah, stomach. that would be great. <laughs> that would have been the best. Um, this is from another faction too. Quick sailing. Untack one of your crew with the top man trade. Huh. I guess top men are the guys who are sailing. Uh, aren't top men the guys who are in the uh, the the crow's nest at the top? Seems so, yeah. Um, I'm going as fast as I can, you fat old pig. Jeremy muttered under his breath. So yeah, you can be like super, super crazy sailor. Uh, Rosa Maria de Barcino. Uh, finally a female here. Rosa has plus one influence while in La Boca. <laughs> There's usually a lot of women in this game, yeah. Because uh, like Bonnie McGee is the the big one for the people that we opened last time. Because we opened Captain Bear. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, Rosa has plus one influence on La Boca, and she has like a lot of adventuring, uh, quite a bit of influence and swashbuckling. Interestingly, come, come, gentlemen, I am armed. But then again, what could a woman know about using a sword? <laughs> she, <laughs> she has three swashbuckling. She's like almost as good as the captain, right? The captain's got five. Uh, well, she's pretty pretty good. Yeah, her prep captain has five. She's pretty good anyway. She can punch people also. And she's also in our faction, so this is great. Sniper. Look at this, Nick. Sniper. Slays immediately after a crew with one special westbuckling attack to absorb hits from a boarding attack. That crew is sunk. Hmm. Uh, one swashbuckling attack to absorb a hit. Oh, wow. 
Oh, it's an action. All right, got this. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so you play this when uh, when there is like a s feeble dude attacking with just one smash buckling. You can just basically snipe this guy. <laughs> uh, Brennan, uh, loyal. Um, act attack Brennan and discard a card from your hand to draw a card. Now this is weird because he's loyal, so I don't think you can actually use it in this deck because he's from a different faction. I think it is. is I, that's what I was trying to figure out. So I trying to read about deck construction. I think you can use guys from other factions, but then I think you have to pay extra cost, uh, and you cannot use the loyal dudes. Yeah. Oh, if they're loyal. Yeah. You what can't use them in yeah. your deck. And if they're not loyal, then you can use them, but I think you have to pay one extra influence. Yeah. Uh, one. Yeah, influence. I think that's the, that's the name for the cost. Um, Sandover's Guard. Uh, it's, it's a crew, loyal, no attachments. Steel is the best sword, honor is best shield. They good at everything instead of, except of making money. <laughs> and actually pretty good at swashbuckling, so having them a couple of those guys would be pretty nice. Brutes. I think we already had the Brutes in last time around. When the Brutes attack to absorb hits, they absorb two extra hits. Yeah, so the, the Brutes are... Even in the RPG, because the RPG came before the CCG in this case, the brute squads are like the default. We need to have something always attacking. Hmm. So they, they are basically your cannon fodder, they and your standard dudes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they have they're pretty cheap, and they give you one splash buckling. What, what else do you need, right? And they also absorb. They're pretty good at fighting because they absorb extra hits. So you can like you know tag them uh, to absorb two extra hits, so three hits in total, I think. Pretty sweet. Fancy dance. We already had to hit him again. Uh, again. After you, Alphonse. Oh no, after you, I insist. Oh, okay. So, going a little bit backwards here. Yeah. For the crew, it says, you may hire and use crew without faction symbols and from other factions, but mm -hmm. they will not help your captain's ability. Yeah, that was, that was the thing that we talked about uh, at the beginning. Yeah, so if you are using people from the other factions, they won't actually trigger the captain's ability. So you kind yes. of want to have a certain amount of people from your own faction in your deck. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this captain ability to remind you guys is... Uh, while you have three or more other Castilian crew, oh wait a minute, uh, Castilian crew on your ship, all your boarding attacks inflict uh, one extra hit. Yeah. So you're better at boarding stuff when you have people on from your own crew. These are the right. guys I always played. I really liked these guys. These the guys, the, yeah. this, this faction, the nice. Castile, yeah. I like Captain Barrack like thematically, but Orduño, he spoke to me. <laughs> with his sexy voice like yours well because it was the person that i used to play the most um he enjoyed canon and he enjoyed captain reese who was kind mm. of the uh bloody roger or whatever um or the jolly roger <clears throat> and he just everything was about cannoning for him so the only way that i could really counter was to have a ship so fast that he couldn't cannon me before i, ca I caught him hmm so it was a very it was a game of cat and mouse and whichever uh, we were both mice I guess mouse and mouse <laughs> <laughs> two mice eat, uh, fighting each other one has cannons the other one boards the other <laughs> um, so yeah this is near miss uh, and this one um, is basically you suffer two less hits so it's kind of like uh, you do two less hits man it's getting a bit dark outside um, this is. Uh, adventures, one sea away, four adventuring, so a pretty uh, easy adventure. Uh, plus one smash buckling. This crew inflicts, oh, it attaches to a crew. And it, the crew gets plus one smash buckling, and this crew inflicts two extra hits during boarding attacks. So yeah, this is like the perfect thing for this kind of deck, right? Mm -hmm. Ah, Domingo. Do, do you know this guy? Uh, it's, I've been looking at him. I think he's, is he the first mate? He might be the first mate. That's very possible because it's very expensive. Five credits or five influence, I guess. Domingo has plus two sailing if he, his captain is the Castilian. So yeah, he has plus two sailing, which means he has four sailing. This is crazy. This guy is awesome. Yeah. I think you want you pr probably want to have him in starting posse. I would but imagine. But then, but then you lo lose like five from eight from your posse. So this is going to be a, uh, quite an investment. I don't know. You pick uh, Domingo and Sandoval's guard. And you've got freaking what? Well, that's just uh, two guys then. You have you, eleven freaking. Uh, I think if you do that, you can't even sail your ship. Yeah, because they produce th th three sailing, and your ship has four. I guess you can use it. No, they produce five sailing. 
Oh yeah, because he produces far. But yeah, you're right. You're right. That's probably a very good one. <laughs> Brutes again, Fancy Dance again, Shellbacks. We already had those guys. They're just adventurers. Fancy Dance owns. If I was a pirate, I would be a Fancy Dan. Uh, so this is interesting because this guy is villainous. Who Fancy Dance? No, uh, Slippery Saul. Ah, uh, Slippery Saul. Near miss again. Castilian Swordmaster is again plus one swash buckling. Uh, and wow, we have another Dominion Martin de Avila, so you have multiple of those, I guess. Yeah. Cutlass uh, item, this crew inflicts two extra hits uh, during boarding attacks. Nice. Master Gunner, crew attachment, plus one cannon. No, 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 you'll get your head blown clean off if you don't pay. Oh, well, we <laughs> weren't learning anyway. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> when you pay attention here, I guess you wanted to say. Master of the Tops is another crew attachment uh, plus one sailing. So these are like very basic uh, crew attachments that just give you additional uh, stats. So this one gives you more influence. Uh, this one gives you more swashbuckling. I think these are like very standard things. Uh, Don Diana. Uh, he's a loyal villainous swordman plus one. Don Diana inflicts one extra hit during boarding attacks. You may draw one card immediately before Don Diana starts a boarding attack. So this is important because, as we said, like these uh, cards that you have on your hand, you will use the cards that you have on your hand to um, to use these things here, mm -hmm. like to counter thing attacks and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, so having like a, an additional card on your hand gives you like more options to so you're well, better at fighting. So what's interesting is I've been looking through this deck, mm. and uh, so like. These three attacks. If you look at the crew cards, hmm. the the people who you hire, all of the crew cards are punches. Mm -hmm. But to defend against punches, uh, you need an action in your hand. Uh, let, let us get an action. But so. not every action is a it has a punch. No, it is. Every action yeah has, has a, punch. a punch defense. Mm -hmm. So, you, it, like, at any given time, especially if you go in to start a boarding, like this particular deck seems to want to do, you're going to have to have a, a pretty significant uh, uh, variety of cards in your hand. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I really, it's also funny that you discard the hand, so you're basically you're giving up options if, yeah. you're, if you're fighting. Well, I mean, at least for those, because this game has two uh, discard piles. You discard mm -hmm. the cards that you use for, the, like, the punch thrust abilities and then there's the cards that you exhaust hmm. so the cards that you use for an attack or whatever you once those cards run out you shuffle that deck and yeah, yeah you shuffle them back but you have to draw them eventually right yes so this is manuel de javes and he when manuel attacks to absorb hits he absorbs two extra hits except during boarding uh so he's kind of like a cannon defense dude i guess mostly uh here is padre esteban He's a gunner and he's holy. A holy gunner. Nice. <laughs> Look at his reading the Bible while firing a cannon. This is amazing. Look at this art. <laughs> this is super sweet. That is amazing. Let us give us thanks to Theos for the land, for the lead you are about to receive. Oh, so Theos. So this is basically a different type of religion going on here as well, right? Oh, man. Bully boys, no attachments. When bully boys attack to absorb hits, they absorb two extra hits. So, man, there's a lot of things that really are great in a battle, I think. No attachments. Uh, marketeers, I think we already had those guys. Peg leg action. When you suffer hits, you suffer three fewer hits, and this card attaches to one of your crew. This attachment has a leg trait. A crew may not have more than one leg attachment. It's kind of amazing. That's amazing. You basically lost your leg <laughs> during, during a fight. And I like that it stays around. You just walk around with a pig leg from now on. Uh, the, the only thing is that it doesn't actually give you any, any disadvantages. No, it's just it saves you and it gives you an <sighs> awesome story. I love this. I love this. This is so good. Oh, I hope there's also like a parrot. <laughs> Prepare for boarding. Action. Uh, pay instead of, uh, play instead of performing a boarding attack. For the remainder of the boarding, all of your boarding attacks inflict one extra hit. So you can kind of forfeit one boarding attack because you kind of alternate with uh, the two players attack each other and you kind of for forfeit one of the attacks. So not attack, but then your subsequent attacks will be stronger. Um, press gank. Put into play from your hand as a crew with an influence cost less than three. 
put in a play from here. Oh, not as a crew. So you can immediately get a guy from your hand into action. It's weird. He just kind of appears. Yeah. Where were you? Right <laughs> you, were, you, you were there under stowed away. How, how'd you get over here so fast? Um, quick tag. Play when you suffer hits from a cannon attack. You suffer two fewer hits. So again, cannon defense. Uh, adventure 1C away, attack 3 adventuring against small adventure, and this gives you more adventuring. So this is really great, I think, for the adventurer guild. Yeah. Uh, again, 3 adventuring, and you get 3 cannons. So this is maybe a slightly better. Uh, this is 3 adventuring, you get influence. And this is 3 adventuring, you get sailing. So this, I think, this, that's, that's the thing that you want to keep with, with this one. 3 adventuring, and you get swashbuckling. And you get uh, additional hits. Uh, Billy Bones, opponent's ship attachment. Oh, so you can put this on your opponent's ship. Billy counts as one crew against the crew maximum of the ships attached to any player in the same sea may tax two swashbuckling as the action to sink Billy. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do that? Hiding deep in the shadows of the hold, Billy sneaks uh, whatever food he can, waiting for the day he finds the man who took his life away. <laughs> oh my god. It's just like pocket zombie. No, you put a stowaway on the, on your opponent's ship and the, the stowaway eats, eats away the, the resources so they cannot put any other people on board. Uh, and you have to... And you have to, like, um, pay two swashbuckling to kill this guy. That's amazing. Naval sanction. Uh, unique. Uh, letter of Mark. You may not put this card into play unless you have started one or more boardings this game. While naval sanction is in play, your crew each inflict one extra hit during boarding attacks. It's interesting they did away with letters of Mark later. Oh, later you don't have to have those anymore? Yeah, because it just is sort of a strange kind of, I get better card. Mm. Hmm. That and so it's like, well, you know, it's one less card in your deck because why wouldn't you play that? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's like it's like you would never not play it in this deck because it's a, it does it helps you doing what you're doing. Yeah, so it's kind of like Desperado. <laughs> right now. in Netrunner. Uh, target a ship. If that ship has more than <clears throat> one untacked crew, that player must tag one of their crew. So this is interesting um, because um, this has like the uh, like there's the, those little flags in the middle. There's one. Uh, yeah, let me focus this. So there's one yellow flag and ro one red flag, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the way this works is uh, if you are playing this, you have to pay three adventuring uh, to um, to play this uh, this action, and your opponent can cancel this by playing one influence. Yeah. It's a nice, like, if you have so many of that resource that you can just sit there and force him to do stuff. Because if you can take away his sailing, yeah, then you're going to be able to board him. Well, this is influence, it's not sailing. But I guess the people that have to be tapped for influence maybe also have sailing. So yeah, uh, I think this is kind of like this thing where it's like, oh, no, I'm trying to catch up with him. I'm going to play this. So uh, he cannot be as fast. Uh, carousing, I think we already had this before. Play when you are paying a skill cost, discard one card from your hand to produce one point of cannon, sailing, adventuring, influence, or swashbuckling. Uh, yeah, so you can basically turn cards into 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 resources. From st stem to gudgeon a action, play instead of performing a boarding attack until the end of this boarding. Uh, boarding attacks uh, by either player inflict two extra hits. Oh wow! So this makes the boarding way way more vicious. <laughs> It's interesting that you have to skip a boarding attack because then the player, the opposite player, gets the counter attack immediately, and then he already the so the opponent benefits from this more than you do immediately. Yeah. So so you kind of have to play it in a in a situation where you already have the upper hand. I guess. I don't know. Gold only buys obedience. Play when you purchase a crew from your captain's faction. That crew cost is reduced by two. So this is basically modded. <laughs> <Netrunner's modded. laughs> play when you're paying the sailing cost to begin a boarding grappling hooks produce a three sailing Sailors. oh yeah so this basically makes boarding easier we already had that before yeah uh, everything about this deck is about boarding 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 everyone's yeah, gonna be swinging off of the 
the ropes. Well, not everything. So we got we got some random cards which which were not not about morning. Yeah, I have a feeling those are the fifteen randomized cards. That could very much be target an opponent's ship, and in this sea, your ship begins boarding that ship. All of your boarding attacks during this boarding inflict one extra hit. So, so this is like a special type of boarding again, something that you can uh, the opponent can counteract. Yeah. Uh, I fight bet I fight better <laughs> drunk. Play instead of a con. Conducting a boarding attack. Target one of your crew who gains plus two switch buckling until the end of the boarding. So you can boost one of the guys, but you have to skip one attack. And the final one is uh, narrow escape. Play, play when you are paying an adventuring cost to produce plus one adventuring. Not something that is very good for, for this deck, I feel. Although there are some adventures inside here. All right, Nick. So this is, uh, this is the Armada. This is Castile. I like Castile a lot. We're going to see Castile in play, I think, because um, this is one of the decks we're going to try out when we play this game. And we're going to play this game very soon because I will be visiting you very soon and I think I will bring some of the decks with me so we, can play the, so we can play this. This is going to be fun. It's going to be very I, interesting. I, I think that if we were to open up another deck, we should probably open up Captain Reese, the Crimson Rogers, mm -hmm. uh, just because these are the uh, default like super bad guys. All right, so let's we're gonna maybe open one in future, and yeah. then and then uh, we will be ready to to begin uh, begin playtest. So I, I guess maybe we should have talked about this at the beginning. Yeah. They very recently AEG sold the Legend of the Five Rings IP off to yes. Fantasy Flight, and they're gonna yes. create what seems to be a new living card game version of. Uh, L5R. And the reason that this is important is that we know that some of the old design team has been hired by AEG and that Doomtown itself has been uh, pretty good and AEG has been producing that. Yeah. And so with them getting rid of L5R, they now have enough funding at AEG to do something on so? their own. So I'm hoping that they're going to release their own 7th C living card game. Uh, let's see about that. I don't know. Uh, one thing I also wanted to uh, mention is that this, this box is like impossible to close. <laughs> yeah, because it doesn't have... It, this is. I talked about this last time, but I don't think that. Yeah. I think it was off camera, where yeah. it doesn't have the little divot in the front, so you yeah. can't push things in. Ah, oh, it draw, drove me crazy for years. And so, like, the, like this, the manual doesn't go in because the the the, the thing that stops on the other side. So we, I cannot put it like this in here. Yeah. And I put it in the front, uh, like this. Then it doesn't close because then I I cannot put this in here. So because it's it's been stopped. So, it's horrible. So there, there's a, there's a, some CCG history here, or some card game history, because this game made me uh, want to start using like sleeves and boxes, right? <laughs> this is the one. But this so is like the one. at the time, nobody used sleeves for their games at all. Dragon uh -huh. Shield maybe had just started producing their stuff. Sleeves yeah. weren't required anywhere. But like this style of box. I think forced people to never want to use their deck boxes ever again. <laughs> I did again. it. I closed it, guys. I closed oh it. God! I yeah. It's you know I forget a lot because I had played this game something like fifteen years ago. Yeah. And uh, but that I remember. I remember just being angry at the deck boxes all the time. Being angry. Let's see about uh, if we can uh, start uh, can start playing this because I'm really excited about. It. So far, I'm really impressed by this. It seems to me um, like it's a more simplified Doomtown. Yeah. Well, Doomtown and this game definitely share a lot of similarities, yeah, which definitely. is another reason why I think. AEG is going to take the funds they got from L5R to make it. I hope so. Seat. I hope so. And also, it's really exciting because we get to see L5R being reprinted as well. So that's supposed to be also a very, very good game. Yeah, that game's crazy. Just because it's been so long, it's one of those games that's almost impossible to do what we're doing here. Yeah. Because the game is so long. like it, And it's one long narrative, and it's just, yeah too complicated i think so having a place to start i think is a great place all right so this was a 7th c that was the castile starter set and we're gonna return soon with some other things and until then we're gonna put this into the museum belongs in a museum <laughs> belongs in a museum